Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Behind the Veil, a show that provides insight into the world of weddings. I'm your host, Keith Willard. Welcome back to the show. So today we're going to be talking about, so you want to throw a fundraiser. I mean, it sounds like a great idea. And honestly, after the 2020 year, I mean, nonprofits are in need of help in multiple ways. But at the end of the day, we as event professionals, we need to understand if we're going to do more harm than good. And what happens when you get a no from a corporate sponsor? Like, how should you take that? And then there's volunteers. Volunteers are a whole different level. So we're going to be talking about all the pros and cons of throwing a fundraiser. And we have an amazing guest who her name is Kelly Hensley. We're going to be introducing her shortly. But before I introduce her, let me introduce Brooke Logan Stoner. Hello, Brooke. Hi, honey bunny. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? I'm good. So Marcy, Marcy's having a little uh, connection problem here, so she'll be on in just a second. But I'm I'm super excited about our our guest today. So am I. I know she's awesome. And you know, so the, one of the things I love about Kelly is that she's very straightforward about what she says and what she talks about, and and it, there's no bones about it, right? Oh, she's one of those say what you mean girls, and I love that. You know, <laughs> right you exactly that's kind of a, like our, our our show specialty it's like you know it's one of those There's things it's like yeah. you know we re right we really want to make sure that people understand like what they're getting into when they think about doing fundraising because again it's a great way to get your name out there but it, are you really going to do more harm than good or are you doing good for good let's let's say right so we're going to find me, out <laughs> all right we're going to find out so let me introduce kelly hensley hi kelly welcome to the show Hi, thank you so much. I, I appreciate the invite. Thank you. Oh my, well, I should state that you are the Florida Regional Director of Events and Community Partnerships uh, for Cleveland Clinic. Uh, fa, fa, fa. Okay, the saying. <laughs> and the current president of the South Florida Chapter of uh, uh, South Florida Chapter of Meeting Professionals International, or MPI, which is no small feat, FYI, because I, being the South Florida NACE chap, uh, president, I get it. It's it's a rough place to be. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I'm actually going in my second term. So COVID really shook things up uh, last year, and. It's ironic that we're talking today about fundraising because uh, this nonprofit is focused on fundraising and dependent on venues and restaurants and catering companies yeah. and vendors. And during COVID, everyone was hurting and everyone was affected by that. So how do you call on these associations and organizations to help you get engaged with your members when they're trying to stay afloat. So I agree. Yeah. I agree. And so Marcy, oh, look at that. Marcy, yay. I'm so excited. Hello. You got, oh, hello. Okay. I'm glad you got your technical issues yes. worked out. Technical I'm so issues are done. <laughs> Hopefully. Yes, <bro>. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed. Well, I'm glad you know, I was on time today. <laughs> I know. I actually I was. I and I was just telling Kelly. I said, you know, she'll show up as we do the intro, as you did. It's amazing. Perfect timing. But, but I shut up. <laughs> but you know what, Kelly? Honestly, that is a very that that is the question. I mean, because after COVID, here we are on the other side of it, and companies are really doing everything they can to rebuild their business. And a big part of that, obviously, is getting their name out into the community. And fundraising is a big part of that. But, you know, how do you balance the idea of raising money and having events together with the issues of COVID and the issues of finding sponsorship. I mean, I feel like today's job is harder than ever than it was two years ago. 100%. Um, <laughs> it's it, like it, it, crazy. It, it, yeah. It, um, how do you make that call to a potential vendor or a restaurant or a venue or a hotel and right. actually ask them for complimentary anything, room, food, beverage, labor, um, when they're really hurting. And, you know, you it, it, it's a very fine line that you have to walk and you don't want to ruin that relationship. And when you go into these fundraising conversations, yeah. you want to go into it with a mutually beneficial opportunity and, and an opportunity that is going to last 
a lifetime, right? You don't want to have a one-off. You want to have right. a strong partnership that you can build in a, in, a, in a relationship with this organization that can go for years and years. So it's a really difficult time to ask for help uh, and, and sponsorship during right. this COVID world. Well, you know, the thing is, is that part of my intro and part of the the ads that we put out was, are you doing more harm than good? And I think that is a, an important piece to talk about because when we, and, and we're all guilty of this, we are all guilty of this, is that we go back to the same people over and over and over again because they said yes. And we know that they have a big heart and that they, you know, we know that they're, they want to be involved. And so we we go back to people like Over the Top or we go back to Peacock's Catering or we go back to some of these other local companies because they say yes. And at some point, they're going to have to tell us no. I mean, they they can't con always, always give over and over and over. I mean, you know, so that means branching out into a whole new world, you know, and, and as a, as somebody in your position, I mean, how do you even start branching out? Like where, do, where do you even go to get ideas for new sponsors? I think it's, you know, for MPI, I think it's about building your brand. And I think it's also about building your board of directors as well as your member base and engaging with your entire member base to create long lasting relationships and also to really find that mutually beneficial opportunity. So what is that venue or restaurant or hotel? What do they need? What are they looking for? Do they want to get in front of our members? So how do we create that relationship or that opportunity and make sure that you're meeting the goals and the visions and the, the mission of that organization and pairing it with the appropriate event or a pr appropriate opportunity. So yep. then it becomes that really good relationship and that really good partnership that can potentially last for years. But that takes a lot of listening. You know, I have to tell you, yeah. I mean, us in, <laughs> in, us in the event world, sometimes we're not so great on, on the listening skills, you know? I mean, we're so like hardcore about, let me get a yes, yes, yes. Because I feel like many of us come from a sales life, you know, like, did you come from a sales life? I think I saw in your in your yeah. profile that you had a sales career at some point, and I know I that you're did. you probably were amazing at it. Um, but you know, we're so like keep going until you get a yes. Yeah, I, I think I've learned over the years, and, and and it was definitely by trial and error, Keith. I yeah. I think you know, um sponsorships is a is a is a difficult position it's a difficult job and and there's only i think a few people that are that can really master it because then you become a salesperson right. and the last thing that anybody wants to be is sold on something and sold on something that doesn't fit their goals and their expectations so right. i think you have to take that sales portion out of it and really put in that relationship building and that partnership building. Um, but again, it's that fine line. God, that's so, I mean, it's, I mean, I, I wish I could figure out a way to convey to our audience how, what a difficult situation it is to be in, to be the producer of a fundraiser, because not only do you have to be politically correct, but you also have to be very sure that your end product is going to fulfill the needs that you're you're promising to your sponsors. You know, if you say to let okay, and I'm going to bring NACE up specifically. So let's say I'm doing a NACE event and I tell the West End Fort Lauderdale, who did our last event, we love them, that you know uh, we plan to have 30 to 50 people at at the event that are in the event industry that are pros in the event industry. So that gives you exposure, right? And let's say that somebody fell through on the marketing or the advertising or didn't do a good job of the social media portion of it. And then you only had 10. I mean, Better as body. a, oh, <laughs> right. So then not only do you have a waste of labor, food, location, advertising promises, now you're not even able to give them exposure. 
And I, I, you know, it's one of those things that I feel like people need to really think about what the end result is going to be before they step into this. You know, it's, it sounds great. Oh, I'm going to do this fa fabulous fundraiser. I'll get my name out into the community, right? But, but you have to be sure that you're going to be able to fulfill the promises that you give. And I, and I think that's where you really need to know where the vendor or, or whoever you're getting the sponsorship from, uh, right. the in-kind donation, really knowing and understanding what their ultimate goal is. And I think it's also when, when you look at it from the other side. So if you're the person that's giving the sponsorship, I think it's important to be able to be present during the event and really figure out what you want to get out of the event. So are you building more relationships? Are you connecting with the members? Are you hopefully creating an opportunity to engage with one of these members to potentially bring uh, an event to your facility? So I, I think you there's two goals on, on both sides, right? And it's ensuring you're, you're, you're setting forth what that goal is and how are you going to achieve it? Right. Um, so it's, well, it's and, difficult. So as, as the current president of MPI, I, I mean, I can tell you as my, the current president of NACE, my biggest issue so far is member rebuilding, right? I mean, during 2020, hotels went through this massive, you know, I, I, I don't want to say layoff, but it was, and therefore there wasn't somebody paying these members, uh, uh, dues. And so we had this huge amount of people that dropped off because they couldn't personally afford to do this. This is something that the, the corporations are doing. And now that we're on the other side of that, we're seeing it's, it feels like even like almost turtle like slow rebuild, and I feel like my number one mission at this point is m membership rebuilding. What is it for, for MPI? Like, what is your number one goal at this point uh, as far as getting the chapter back up to where you want it to be? That well, I think we're social creatures, right? So I think yeah. we all want to network. We all want to get out there. Um, we're all in this industry. We're pretty all type A personalities. Um, so I know that we want to get out there and socialize and communicate and network um, for MPI, building the membership base. And, and we are slowly increasing. We've had seen, uh, you know, we definitely saw a fall or drop during COVID. But during uh, this new year, this 2021, we have seen an increase. And I think it's because people want to be engaged and they want to network with suppliers and planners and to figure out new ways. So I think there may be a lot of people that are potentially have not joined an association that are now looking for avenues of finding new business because things have changed and how we're networking and how we're socializing. How do we do that? So I think they look for organizations like ourselves, like MPI South Florida, and really want to be engaged. So how do we do that? I think it's about bringing educational programmatic opportunities. I think it's bringing some fun dinners. I think it's mm. also our mix and mingle events where, you know what, M meet us at a venue and have a cocktail or some hors d'oeuvres and, and figure out ways that other people are reinventing themselves in, in the industry. As far as, um, you know, trying to get the, the members or trying to get the people who are not current members to join, what are your thoughts as to moving that scale forward and building on, you know, to, to climb that mountain back? I think that, that going back to those educational programmatic opportunities is, is really critical. Um, I think a lot of people are looking for their CMP, uh, being able to have those credits available to them with these special events or education events is really critical. I think it's also being able to talk about the tips and trends of our industry. What, how are we moving in this world? How are we creating events during COVID? There are people that are still very scared to meet in person. So can we still provide a virtual component that's engaging and that's educational? And, and is it at the right time of day? Is it, um, how does it speak to them? So it's really taking a deeper dive on 
what do we want to give our members and and asking them what do you want from us how can we help you to be better at what you're doing and is there something that could be done or said to the attendee to maybe facilitate them actually making that additional jump to not just attend but to join well, um, yes, I, I mean, I, I hope that what they hear from us at the events uh, is something that speaks to them. I hope that they see that the board of directors, we have an amazing board of directors that are a mix of planners and suppliers and being able to get their experience and their insight on what our organization is about is really critical. Uh, I try to ensure that all of our board of directors attend most of our events. I know that's kind of hard because it is all volunteer, um, yeah. but it's really important for our board of directors to be able to be approachable, to not be intimidating, to, to be able to talk to the members. Because coming to an event, especially by yourself, is so scary. That, it really that, is. You, it really is. It really right? is. I mean, yeah. If <laughs> you're, you're new in this business, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, and that's one of the things is that if you're new into the industry, let's say that you like we have we have a photographer in on our board, Tiffany, who is amazing at what she does, but she just well, and I can't say Tiffany for sure because she has an like a really fabulous um, extrovert personality. So she's never shy on being able to, <laughs> to talk to people. But, you know, if you're new to the industry and don't know anybody, going to an event can be like scary. Like it's yeah. like, right? And then, and, yeah. and to be honest, South Florida can be a little cliquish once in a while. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm saying that. Nobody else is saying that. I'm saying, I'm saying that. Um, but, you know, there are that that possibility where people know each other and they get into this kind of comfort level and they just talk to each other. And it's really hard for somebody new sometimes to be able to, to come to an event and feel included. And so that makes yeah. your job even harder because you have to, like, look out for those new people and yeah. take them under yeah. your wing and start yeah. introducing them. Absolutely. We want to. Right. And and I think that's one of the things that as a board really decided that that's what we want to do is we want to ensure that when you come to an MPI event, MPI South Florida, that you feel comfortable and that we are approachable and right. you can ask us anything and we want to help you drive your business. So how do we do that? And that's really what our approach has been. All right, so you and I have been in the not-for-profit world for for a bit, and I'm not going to say too much because you know I've got like the the <laughs> the filter on at the moment. Um, so uh, you know, if you were somebody new, and, and I remember when I was like 21, 22, and just getting into the not-for-profit world, you know, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I want to like get into the event world, and a great way to do that is to volunteer for a not-for-profit, right? But at 22, I really thought I knew everything. Who doesn't at 22? We all think, oh, I, I've got the best idea that's never been done before, right? So, you know, you're just getting into, you, you're, you're a newbie, you want to do a, an event. What are some, like, danger things, you know, uh, red flags? Uh, that that's not even the right way to put it. What are what are some roadblocks that you think that somebody new into the event world that is putting on, let's say, their very first fundraiser should be aware of getting into it? Like for me, my first my first point of advice would be volunteers. Start with volunteers. That should be your very first thing. Corporate sponsorship later. If you don't have people to run the event you don't have an event so find your 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 base of people that are going to help you first and then go from there like what would what would be your piece of advice well i definitely agree with you on the volunteers um i think also just putting a plan together right putting down on paper what your plan is what your yes. goal is brainstorm on what you want to get out of this event yes and say, taking a look at your budget what's it going to cost Right. So if, you know, if it's going to cost you X amount of dollars, how many how many dollars do you need to raise to cover those costs? And if you break even, then you have a good event. Right. Because you're only going to build from that years to come. 
Uh, but the last thing you want to do is lose money. Um, <laughs> although it's happened, <laughs> it, it has happened. But um, I think really putting that plan together and trying to find out what your goals are and then looking at your budget is going to be critical for your success. You know, when I hear people say, you know, we, we, our first event, we, <laughs> were even and as as people that have been in the event industry for a while and in the not for profit when i hear somebody had their first event and they hit even i'm like good job holy crap that's amazing your first right. event you broke even and there's people out there that are like what what do you mean that's a good thing and i'm like well for a first time <laughs> event think about the amount of stuff that you're invited to every week every month every year and there was a, an, a new event that you thought enough of that you went, you know what? I'm not going to go to my Thursday night normal. I'm going to go to my Friday night new. That's a big deal. Right. Because you're building your brand, right? You're bringing right. awareness surrounding your event, which, which most likely will have some sort of brand to it. And if you broke even the first time around, Hopefully you're going to build off that because people are going to remember they had a great time or they remember how they felt or they remember, you know, what their experience was. So that's only going to climb up when you have the next event. See that you nailed it on the head. How did people feel at your event? Did they actually feel like they were having a good time and did they feel like they were giving back? You know, right. I mean, those are two big components. I mean, um, I'm I'm working with Equality Florida right now on a on an event that's happening in like I don't know four weeks, five weeks, and they have a 10 percent rule actually on their event that their event can't cost more than 10 percent of everything they brought in. I'm like, those are pretty hefty goals, ladies. Who's, and who is that? Uh, Equality Florida. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, they have a 10% rule, which I'm like, shoot, I don't know if I could even follow a 10% rule. I'm like, you know, I, I've been in this for a bit, you know, There's but a challenge that, right there. that is right. There's a challenge there. It's like, holy crap. But, you know, and if you're new, you're having to start brand new with everything. You're having to start brand new with corporate sponsors, volunteers, location, marketing, morals, marketing. I mean, yeah. how, you know, there's so much now to the world that we didn't experience way back when, because before it used to be print. If you didn't have it in print, it didn't exist. So you had to go to the newspapers and the magazines and all that stuff and make sure that you got interviewed. Now it's all social media. It's like, it's, it's a totally different world. Well, and how do you get that sponsor if, if they're, if it's a brand new event, right? Right. How are they going to know if this is a successful event? So it all goes back to that business plan, right? Being able to showcase your business plan and what you think you're going to get out of this and the marketing that you're putting towards it and the volunteers that you have it on it and the budget plan that you're putting together. That's critical for you to ask for a sponsor because they want to know if you're going to be successful and what, what type of assets or what type of uh, partnership are you able to give that organization? And that's, I think, the hard part is that, you know, when people are, let's say, and let's say that we're raising money for childhood leukemia. I'm just pulling something like a little sad puppy out of the, the yard at the moment, right? So because you feel like everybody should be willing to sponsor this. I mean, it is a worthy, it's, a, it's something worthy to be a part of. But companies are a little bit more cold hearted when it comes to that. They're looking at marketing. They're looking how many oh, eyes see our logo? How many places is this going to show up? You know, and I think that's a that's a rough that's a hard you know, how turn. far is the reach going to go? Exactly. How far is the yeah. reach going to be? You know, I feel like that's a hard turn for people that are in this industry to understand that it's not all love and support and joy. You know, there's a, a real a bunch of extremely hard work. Yeah, but sure. exactly. But, you know, th these corporations are looking at what kind of marketing am I getting out of this? Is my company going to be associated with a really great event that raises a lot of money and then afterwards get some great PR because What's the we raised, be, huh? yeah, 1.5 million for marketing 101. Well, because it's, it's, it's all going to come down to the bottom line for them in the end. I mean, they want to know what are they going to get? What's their return? What's their return? You know? 
but, but it's not just what's the return on investment it's what's the return on involvement oh, well, yeah. I can't even tell you how many times I've talked to a corporation that decided to sponsor the event that I I'm working on because it was cheaper to get the marketing that I was going to provide versus them just paying for it on either radio, wow. TV, at, you know, newspaper. And they're like, wow. well, shoot, we can give you a hundred thousand dollars or it would cost us $200,000 to get the same, the, the same representation over these medias. Wow. And you, you know, and you have to think about that. Right. Yeah. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? Not specifically that per se, per se but I'm just yeah. saying, you know, yeah. overall, like how do you, how do you feel like corporations really judge a not for profit as far as being involved or not being involved? Well, I, I think it In goes general. back. Yeah. I think it goes back to, you know, for, for MPI, you know, we have to ask, who would get a return on investment for working with event planners and suppliers, right? Right. We probably wouldn't go to a animal pet store to ask for sponsorships <laughs> because I don't think that they, although some of us are pretty crazy animals. So I know, but that's funny. Event planners and suppliers, we do act a little crazy in a while. <laughs> But, you know, I think it's making sure that you're spending your time on who fits our model, right? And right. there are going to be a lot of organizations, whether you're a nonprofit or a for-profit, that you really need to take a look at who you're partnering with to make sure it makes sense, right? You, you don't want to make that phone call and ask for a sponsorship and and they're on the other line saying huh that what the hell our model and right, right? So, know your audience know your audience know your audience mm -hmm. exactly and i think Good that point. I, I, exactly and i feel like there's some newbies that get into this this world and they their eyes are wide open and they're like oh i'm gonna you know reach for the stars and they don't even make the orbit so <laughs> I mean, I mean, we've seen it time and time again. I mean, I was, I was that. I mean, when I took over as executive director of a, a, a little small not-for-profit in Dallas called Immunicize, I mean, I really thought that when I was going to take over, I was going to change the world. I mean, I was going to get sponsorships they had never even thought about. Was that when you were 21? Yes, exactly. I'm going to have Xerox and IBM and Texas Instruments. I'm going to get these big people and they're going to write big checks to me. And I was like, oh, I felt like I was I almost laughed at it. <laughs> but because I didn't do the homework, I didn't have a business plan when it came to these events. I didn't know my audience. I didn't pay attention to what segment of the community I was going to be marketing this event to. Right. And, and that was stupid on my part. I mean, That's I should have like... Do your stopped. homework, right? Do your homework. I mean, that's the thing. Okay, so... One of the favorite events that you put on for is so before you you used to be with Junior Achievement, right? And you were amazing, by the way, at JA World. You were amazing. I loved working with you at JA World because I always knew where I stood. And <laughs> right, there was never any like, right? There was never uh -oh. any of this fluff, like, you know, where people are trying to be politically correct. You were like, okay, here are the rules. Here's what we're doing. Done. I love that. But you produce ridiculously like amazing events that were hugely successful like uncorked oh my god uncorked i mean i don't even know how you you got all those different chefs and people to to be a part of that but you knew your audience i did and and i think again it was building relationships right and building relationships with these um, restaurants and partners and right. looking outside the box as well. You know, it, it just wasn't restaurants. It was ice cream stores and Amazing. dessert stores and bakeries <laughs> and catering companies and maybe even hotels that wanted to showcase their restaurant inside their hotel. So it's really thinking outside the box. That was that Uncorked is very it was dear to my heart. I, I, I loved it. I didn't start the event. Um, 
the wonderful uh, circle of women uh, within JA started that event. Um, but I definitely had fun planning it when I was there. Um, it, it had so many different moving parts and it's fun. It was that gratification of success and just watching this canvas, which I would say a blank canvas, but if you've ever been to JA South Florida, it's not blank. It is a incredible building, um, yeah. but was able to transform it into this really great event that was just very well received and having incredible partners uh, where they were able to help, you know, and, and really work with them to find out where I could get some help and where right. I can spend some money. Um, it, it was definitely <laughs> being very tight on the budget and very, um, very That's detailed on where I needed to go to, to ask for help. But you know, the thing is even your reception desk. And I think this is one of the things that, you know, when we're talking about, you know, so you want to do a fundraiser, a lot of people forget that you're welcome. Your, your, you know, guest check-in quote unquote is just as important as the moment that somebody leaves and gets their car from valet. You know, you, you need to have a smile to a smile. To make sure last people you see exactly right exactly. and you did such a great job on on that the the registration i mean using the updated technology and people standing up with ipads and i mean it was just like so smooth 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 uh but then you had a huge army of volunteers that were literally walking around picking up trash you know looking at somebody that looked a little lost how can i help you oh the restrooms are right here i mean it was constant there was somebody always there to the left or to the right that was like right there like how can i help you how can i help you and i think that's you know that customer service you know is it needs to be kind of reinforced when we talk about not for profits because it is just like owning a business I mean, it is just like owning a business that you have to have the customer service as number one. You know, your yeah. guest has to feel like a true guest. Yep. At the and event. it goes back to that whole saying of how did it make you feel, right? How did you yeah. feel when you came to the event? How did that sponsor feel when they came to the event and saw their name in XYZ area, right? right. And what did the customers and the guests say about their experience in that xyz area right are they taking pictures of it is there are there logo behind these uh you know random people taking pictures in that area so yeah. it, it's you know this this evolving area that is just has tons of opportunity that you want to ensure that your sponsor is getting the correct marketing and branding Right. And then being able to say, did you have a good time to all of the guests, right? So it's just creating that atmosphere of how did you, how did, how did it make you feel? Wow. I mean, and it sounds so easy, but I have to tell you, I'll, you know, one, <laughs> I, we, we could actually do a whole segment just on volunteers because yes. I feel like, I feel like as managers, right? Event managers, sometimes we forget that people are volunteering their time and that you need to take care of your volunteers up to a certain point, but you also have to understand that there's gonna be a percentage of your volunteers that are useless. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna just put it out there because I'm gonna tell you right now, 10 to 20% of volunteers, I wish you would just stay home, to be honest. I'm just, you know. <laughs> Uh, oh my I'm God. I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> well, that's why I said I'm taking the heat on this one. You know, I really do. I, I really think if you're going to volunteer, you're you're there to work. For God's sakes, get up off your ass and stop eating off the I'd rather volunteer. have two that know what they're doing than 20 that I have no idea. But exactly. I do appreciate the sentiment. Don't get me wrong. It makes you work harder. It makes, it makes you work so, harder. So speaking of volunteers, yes. one of the things that I want to hear from both of you uh, as, a, as a media past president who is being at this point, this is my 10th year on the board, um, I would like to hear from the both of you to see how you're going to strategize to get people to volunteer post-COVID, because that's something that's a new world for all of us. That's, well, I think, I think for, first of all, it's safety. You know, I feel like, you know, your volunteers need to feel like they're safe. 
right? So for sure, are we gonna are we gonna take measures to make sure that we provide them with masks, social distancing? Are we asking asking them to do anything that would cause them to be unsafe in any way? Um, I feel like safety is like number one. I agree. What do yes. you think, Kelly? I 100% agree with you. I think um, safety is, is is critical for everyone, right? From your guests, to your attendees, to your staff, and to your volunteers. Um, it's making yeah. sure that everyone feels comfortable in the environment that they're in. Um, it's following all the safety protocols uh, that, that are provided um, and ensuring that it is a good experience um, that you're looking at the safety of your of your of your entire event um, over why you're having the event, right? You want right. to you want to make sure that you're safe before you even attempt to hold a fundraising event. Oh my goodness! So I, I and I, I you. You, I could tell that you were writing a fine line just there because you were saying, oh, their experience. You want to make sure they have a great experience. And and it's funny because there's always a percentage of volunteers that bust their ass, that they're just, you're just like, oh my God, if I could replicate you a hundred times over, I would, you've been amazing. And there's always a, a, a percentage of volunteers that basically signed up in order to get a free ticket. <laughs> But you know what you right, but what crazy. you put in is what you're going to get out of it. I mean, honestly, yes. I mean, in my opinion, is that if you're putting your heart into and soul into something, you're going to get that back tenfold. Yeah. If you're only putting in a little bit of yourself, you're only going to get a little bit back. So I feel like you know people look at volunteerism as you know something that oh you know I don't want to do it because it's too much hard work. But it really is, I mean, it is, yes, there's a time investment and there's a commitment to it, but you're right. getting so much back in the, in the return. So, uh, okay, as, as somebody that's uh, like, you know, connected because I've been in the South Florida community for so many years, if I have a volunteer that has busted their ass and let's say they have a new photography business and I keep going to that because I, for some reason, have a, a bunch of photographers in my head at the moment. If, if somebody has busted <laughs> their ass, quite a few. <laughs> who do you think I'm going to talk about? Right? The person I'm who's gonna, given up their time and their commitment. And Absolutely. Somebody that, somebody that has busted their ass. I, I'm going to mm -hmm. say, look, if they if they work this hard during this this fundraising event, oh my God, I can't even imagine how how much they're going to work for you as their photographer. But just as much as I'm going to say that, what do you think I'm going to say about those lazy asses that, you know, <laughs> fed off? I mean, I'm not shy about this crap. I mean, it drives me crazy. It, it really does drive me crazy. I, I applaud everybody that wants to support and be a part of fundraisers, but come and work. You know, I mean, be ready to do anything. And I understand there are people that have disabilities and issues and, and, and we will work with those. But you got to tell us ahead of time. You have to tell us ahead of time what you're able to do. So that way we can put you in the right positions at the right time to maximize your, you know, your strengths. But mm -hmm. if, if we don't find out until two minutes before that you can't move tables because <laughs> you just had a knee replacement surgery, I don't know what to do with you. I'm like, okay, I got a huge event to go after. I got to, wh where do I put you? Okay. I'm going to start yeah, so throw you at the, have throw it, you at the registration work. desk. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, but, but I, I think, think that. But honestly, the registration right. desk is on. It, that is like the best place to be, especially for a new person. They yeah. get to see everybody walking in the door. They say hello. They're talking to people. It makes them feel more comfortable. They get to know a little bit more about the the chapter as a, you know, or the the uh, the the association as a whole. I mean, right. that's like the best place to put somebody in the very. Well, I have to tell you, my my favorite position was actually trash pickup. I actually one of my very first events that I uh, that I volunteered for here in South Florida was trash pickup, and I think it actually was at JA World. Actually, I was volunteering at one of the events at JA World, and I was walking around just picking up trash, and I got to meet everybody because I was in every single room 
just picking up stuff and I was saying hi, but I'm I'm an extrovert, you know, at, at heart. So it doesn't take very much for me. I mean, I could talk to a rock for God's sakes, you know, <laughs> but it was great because I got to meet so many amazing people and I got to meander and see everything. So I wasn't stuck in one place. I think that each position is what you make of it. Well, and it's, I, I think it's important to find out what the person wants to get out of it, right? If you're yeah. going to offer to volunteer, why are you vol volunteering? It, uh, is there a goal? Are you doing it because you want to give your time? Or is it because you want to meet new members or you want to get your name out of there? Or you want to build brand awareness between all of the members that are a part of the association. So it's really getting a good understanding of what their goal is and then aligning whatever jobs that you have available to fit that goal. I agree. Uh, Marcy had something about boards. Yes, actually, that was what I was talking about is that uh, before that, um, you know, I mean, when you're making a commitment to be involved in something, it's you're going to get back what you put into it ultimately. So, you know, if you can, if you have an opportunity to get involved and you haven't really thought about it or you have thought about it, but you've been on the fence about it, this is the best time to do it because we're coming out of something and we're in, we're on the precipice of something that's brand new. It's a totally new world. And you're, oh. people are in new locations. Everybody's, you know, a lot of people who have worked for big, you know, companies, they've switched jobs. So now's the time to really get involved and start putting yourself out there. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a great time to join a board because you're basically going to be able to write your own ticket. You yes. know, so, I mean, you were coming out of another side, so you're going to have a, a job description, but really, you know, like for NACE. We have so many opportunities on our board at the moment. I mean, we, we've been lucky. We've had a very steady board through the through COVID. But now that we're on the other side, you know, there's real great, uh, there's awesome opportunity to be a part of the board and not feel like you're overwhelmed with responsibility. I mean, yes. Like we're basically hand-holding people. And it's like, here, you know, Come with us to this event. We're going to help you figure this out. We're, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to fail because we're not going to let you fail. And I think that that's a, a really great place to be. I mean, it's not like, you know, you're dealing with a board that was on success, on success after success, after success for 10 years. And they, there's, you know, a, a rigidity. Is that a word? It's not rigid. It's not as rigid. Rigidity. Right, rigidity. <laughs> it's not as rigid as it once was before. So you have a little bit more flexibility. I mean, Kelly, tell us a little bit about MPI and, and, and the board structure. Like, you know, what have you guys had to deal with as far as um, membership, as far as your board? Has, has your board fair, fell, fared fairly well through the last year or two? So we had a few ups and downs uh, last year, but um, we have, there's been a nucleus of us that have really decided that we are going to do this together and we're gonna sign on a second year. We were able to pull a few new uh, individuals that are really helping us in the marketing aspect, which is really where I think the important piece is right now for 2021 and engaging with our members and, and right. letting them know that we're, 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 we're back and we're bigger and better than ever. And we are ready to engage with you. We are ready to hear from you. We want to know what you want. How can we help? What can we do to elevate you in the industry and um, bring business to you? So the board this year is incredible. I, I I'm really excited. Um, the support that we're showing with each other is great because we're all busy. We're all moving 100 miles per hour. We're yeah. all trying to <laughs> figure out what is going on and how do we make our day jobs successful. And then, of course, there's also life, right? I, I have two kids, so I got to balance that as well. Um, but watching this board work together and pick up the slack where you may have potentially dropped it and being right. able to say, you know what, I dropped the ball and I need your help. What can you do to help me? And the next person's like, okay, I've got this for you. Let me, let me run with this. And then 
they may potentially drop in and call back on you and say, okay, I messed up. <laughs> can, you, can you come back? <laughs> but well, it's I being open and being transparent and being okay to say, listen, I need your help. I need support. I, I, I need you. And having that, that ability to ask for it and to communicate with individuals and to get it back in return. I have to tell you, there's no, there, there's no easier way to, to get a whole bunch of best friends than joining a board of a not-for-profit because <laughs> you depend, you end up talking to each other all the time. You depend on each other. You hang out with each other. I mean, it's just, it just happens naturally. So if you're new to an area and you see a board that needs help, jump in. I feel like that's even better than like a one-off event. Join the board because... Well, and you'll get to you'll get to know people quicker. You'll get to you know meet people quicker because yeah. I think it's hard to meet people in general. But I think it's even harder in South Florida. I I, I think I just talked from experience when I moved here in two thousand and three. Right. Um, but you know, and and like we were saying earlier, it's intimidating to go to an event by yourself and and you know have the courage to walk up to somebody and say, hi, I'm so-and-so and, and not have them like, look at you like you're nuts. Right. So yeah, yeah. being able to have that courage. So I think it's, it's getting involved in these associations and volunteering and getting on a committee, even if you want to do that before you get on the board to find your niche. And maybe, maybe you, you plan events for your day job and right. you just want to work with membership or you want to do marketing. You want to dabble in something different and learn a little bit about it. This is an opportunity to get that experience. You couldn't have said it better. I mean, we have, um, so Amy, I'm going to bring up Amy Fisher. She's on our board. So she was new to the area. She'd never worked on a board before. She had, she was like two months into NACE and I was like convinced her to be on the board. I'm like, I guarantee you, you, I'm not going to overwhelm you. This is going to be the easy, easiest position that you've ever done. And we're going to introduce you to a whole bunch of people. And, and she's also the owner of Frost 321. Well, mm -hmm. you know, fast forward a year, year and a half, she is, loves the organization. She has been introduced to more people than ever. And her business actually has a lot more success because of where she is, because she got to be able to be in front of so many people and so many hotels and so many other organizations. I mean, it's an excuse to talk to people. Right. You know, you know, it doesn't it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to sell you. No, right. I'm trying to sell Nace. And by the way, I also own Frost 321. I mean, it's a great segue. To say, Absolutely. oh, I'm I'm on I'm with MPI and I'm coming to check out your venue for hopefully a future meeting. Oh, but I also own this invitation company. Right. I mean, yeah. Ugh, and I mean, tying it into you know tying it into today's show being fundraising, you know, I mean, fundraising. There's so many different avenues that make you know the it makes the chapter and makes the not not for profit organizations propel forward because when you're in a positive mindset amongst positive people and you're moving that ball forward yeah. that's going to get your you more, more motivated it's going to get your business more motivated it's going to get the chapter more motivated you're going to i mean it's like a win 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 all the way around i would actually volunteer for a board before i volunteered for an, an event at this point to be honest i would be like you know what? Let me. If you're gonna do it, do yeah, it. Yeah, if you're gonna do it. I mean, I wouldn't take on the presidency. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just gonna say, well, I, I, I've got an opening. <laughs> I said three years. Oh my <laughs> just... god! Right, I, I I wouldn't take on presidency right at the beginning, <laughs> but just saying from experience. But you know, I bet some of these other positions, and definitely a committee position. Oh my god, I would jump at a committee position. I mean, I I actually one of my favorite. Uh, places uh, positions that I've ever had was doing the events for NACE. I love that because I got to talk to new hotels because these were places that I was, you know, that gave me experience about like what they had available. You know, I got to see their ballrooms. I got to see kind of the food quality. I got to meet their, their catering people. And as an event planner, that is huge for me. It's like to be Absolutely. able to do that kind of stuff. It's like <laughs> crazy, you know? Okay. So, back to back to like the the core subject if you were new to south florida kelly yes you know and you wanted to get involved in the event industry 
you know, let's say MPI, what would be the first first thing that they would do? Call, email? Yes, I would go on our website uh, and take a look at what we're about, what type of events we offer. Um, right. Take a look at our board, where where everybody comes from, what, what their day jobs are and what their experience is. Um, and then I would attend an event and actually get to meet us and uh, meet other members and then inquire if, if you're willing to uh, join a committee, uh, you would need to become a member. Uh, and then once you become a member, we would love to have somebody join a committee. And then you never know where that may lead. You may be a president of MPI South Florida. <laughs> or nace just or nace. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i think that i think that uh at the that we're we're kind of a a for sure right we're we're a sure bet when it comes to meeting somebody nice it's like if you if you send me an email as the president of nace i'm gonna be nice back i'm gonna be like what can i do for you how can i help you you know let's let's meet up at the at the next event come and introduce yourself i'll introduce you to everybody Unlike if you came to me as a DJ, I'd be like, I have a lot of DJs in my book. I don't, I'm so busy. I don't know. I, I don't need another sales pitch. Right. But if yeah. you come to me as, a, as, oh, I want to join NACE and I want to like, you know, come and check out your next event. I'm going to be all over that. I mean, like, okay, sure. Yay. And typically if, if you're in, if you're on a board or you're part of an association and you're looking for something like a dj or an ice cream shop or a linen company yeah you are typically going to go with someone within your association right oh you are 100%. going to play with the people that you mix and mingle with oh we get along in the sandbox you're getting hired yes. exactly I mean, that's just well, how it goes yeah oh. and and you never know and and that's where you build those relationships, right? So you have an opportunity where you have money and you're willing to spend the money. You find that DJ within your organization or association. And then the next day you may have to ask that DJ, I don't have any money for this event. I right. only have X amount of dollars. Can you help me out with this event? And and that's where you again build those relationships and and, and get that long standing partnership to be successful. I just had this happen just had this happen where I, I'm, I'm having to deal with a very tight budget when it came to videography. And because I've worked with this videographer many times before and previous event who I met through NACE, they're like, Keith, we'll work with you. We'll figure it I, out. It's yeah. like, oh my God, you just saved my life. You know, right. you just made me look like a hero in front of my clients. Awesome. And right. You know, it, and it's an additional exposure. But again, in, in the future, he may need something from me. And guess what? I'm going to give it to him. Right. Because you're you not going to forget how you felt. <laughs> when you Look out. at you. Look at that full circle. Oh, my God. I love you full circle there. You're not going to forget how you felt. <laughs> <laughs> that's Ooh. awesome. I love that. See, but that's, yeah. I, I think at the end of the day, it really is how you feel, even as a volunteer, as a member, as somebody participating in the event, it really is at the end of the day, how you feel. Did you have a good time? Did you, did you enjoy your experience? Did you feel important? You know, all did of these things in front of your client. Did you look good in did, front did of your you client? Did you save the day for your client? Right there. I mean, yeah. that's, that's a win because guess what? That client is going to tell their friend how they felt when you saved the day by bringing in a dj that you were able to get cheaper or whatever it may be so that brings you more business because you made that person feel good well i have to tell you when we did ages ago when we did the holiday party for for the industry and i'll, I'll talk about mpi's uh, holiday party coming up but you know when we did the emerald city holiday party i brought clients to that event because I, I knew it was going to be spectacular and I knew we were going to have a lot of people and I knew that the, this would be a great opportunity for them to meet a bunch of the event people that we'd been talking about. And so it was a perfect opportunity. It was amazing, actually. And we actually had Caroline actually on the show a couple of weeks ago from Bottega. Nice. Yeah, so she, you know, one of the very first parties I invited her to was to oh, that. I know that. that. That's right. Yeah, to one of those holiday parties. And now here we are at what? Four years later, five years later, and we have a great relationship. And she That's was great. on the show. And you know, those are those those bridges that you build 
that will help continue to connect you to even newer business. Absolutely. You know, burn and the bridges, kids. No. Nope. Well, and to be able to survive a, uh, a pandemic like this, these are the kind of bridges you need. Because you need support. You need the support of your community and you have to build your community. The best place to build it is through the associations because that is the pe those are the people that you're going to meet that are professional, who know what to do, who you can rely on because you see what they do. You, you interact with them. And that's going to be, you know, those are the people that you're going to recommend. I mean, vice versa. It's, it's a win-win for everybody. That's your, so, that's your tribe for your village right there. Basically. So for, you're <laughs> yeah. right. Shame, shameless plug. So tell us a little bit about the MPI holiday party. What's what, what, ha, what can we expect? So, because so I know it's, it's early, right? It's early, but. Yes, it's at the Bath Club, which is in Miami. We're very excited about it. Um, I can't give out too many details because that would spoil it. No. But I highly recommend you go visit us on our MPI South Florida uh, website. And you can get some inside scoop on dates and times. But it should be a very incredible event. We're looking forward to it. I know I'm looking forward to it. So, I mean, I'm going. <laughs> so I do have a question because I, I know some people may ask. Yes. So I know with MPI, some meetings are for members only, I think. With the holiday party, I would assume it's probably open to everybody, right? We we are opening it up to anyone, yes. Yep. We want to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to see the amazing venue and then to mix and mingle with uh, MPI South Florida. I am Excellent. so excited about this. I mean, I, I went to the the warehouse party that you guys did like i don't know two and a half three years ago and it was awesome like yeah i got to see things like they they would did this whole like 3d visual with a jeep where they did 3d imaging on it it was freaking fantastic i mean <laughs> i was like so excited about this but that's the other thing about like uh volunteering for these organizations you're gonna get to see the newest coolest thing before anybody else does because guess where they're going to show it right at one of these events right you know i mean i think that's the, the other part of that if, if you want to be on the the leading edge of technology and what's happening in the event world get involved yeah. with an event industry you know an, an a, event association yeah be in the know be in the know Yes. Kelly, you were fabulous thank you so oh. much oh well, my goodness i mean i know this was a invitation. Oh my God. I know that, that this was a wide ranging conversation. I should, I, I do want to repeat the fact that you are the Florida regional director of events and community partnership for Cleveland clinic, and also the current president of the South Florida chapter of meeting professional international or MPI. So you can check her out. Look at, I've been actually, if you look down at the ticker tape, you can see the MPI uh, start chapter website. So just go to that and you can connect with Kelly. Um, also, I want to say thank you to Marcy Gutenberg with an affair to remember by Marcy. And of course, the always beautiful Brooke Logan Stoner. We will be thank back you. next Tuesday. And of course, did I even look up what like who we have next Tuesday? Do you remember, Marcy? Um, oh, I oh I no no no. We've got the owner of Black Pearl Limousine to talk about yes. all tr transportation needs and issues. Yes. Dara from Black Pearl is going to be joining us next week. And then the following week, we have um embellished beauty who had just released their own um brand new cosmetic lines lip lip line and eyeliner so we get to hear all about like how they figured out how to put together that's gonna be a fun show for me. i know brooke is already like <laughs> that's me i'm all over that i'm gonna get that, to do my that. and then after that, yeah so it's samples. gonna be super all oh, right samples <laughs> all right. but again thank you again kelly we are so happy to have you on the show and and i just want to say thank you again yeah oh, thank you thank you thank you, right. thank you, thank you brooke. see you see everybody next tuesday at two but for now say goodbye Bye. goodbye